Okay guys, welcome to your third Android tutorial, <laughs> Android, whoops, HTML and CSS tutorial. Uh, this time I'm going to explain, or this episode I'm going to explain how actually cascading works, or what the cascading part of cascading style sheet actually means. So what we've done is, we have an external style sheet, or our styles in another file, and we're applying them with a link tag. This isn't the only way we can actually um, apply a style to a web page or to an element. We can actually define the styles in the HTML page itself, and it's done like this. Style tag. It's literally it. And now we and now anything in this style tag we can use for CSS. So let's just type in a H1 style here. And we'll make the font uh, a nice green, deep green color. Okay. Oops. Color. Done. So now if we load it. Shall we apply that color? Oh, improper. In, look, the thing here is telling me it's an impro invalid property value. He's probably noticed that though, straight off. Boom. Now it's gone that greeny color to really dark green. But what what happened? We're, we're defining a color rule here, and we define a color rule here. Which rule is getting applied? Or why is that one getting applied? Well, that's why it's called a cascading style sheet. Because the styles will cascade down along and override each other. So the, the hierarchy of the, cas of the style sheet, if I write here, it goes external sheet will be overridden by uh, style tag style tag which can again be overridden by inline styles it's a very important concept this okay so that's the order it goes external style sheets style tags inline styles so what's happening here is the browser is applying this rule then it goes, oh wait, this rule is in the style tag, so this rule here overrides. So let's change the font size to be a little bit smaller. Here, 30. And then if we redo this, nice and small now, it's, it's, it's showing that HTML, that text as well. So what's an inline style? Well, remember these attributes? You can actually apply styles with these. In order to do that, you say "sty style equals," and then we can just say "color." And what we'll do is we'll apply another color to it. This time, we'll just make it a super dark blue. Which I make it a little bit lighter to make it easier to see. Boom. Now this style will be applied inside the sheet. So if we remove it, and it's changed to a nice blue color. But the font size 30 px, let's make the font size bigger in here. So we can actually apply a second style by saying font size. That's invalid. 50 px. it becomes very big now if I delete this rule here okay in the style tag and refresh it it has zero effect because then this one here the inline style is overriding our external style sheet which has this rule so this is very useful let's say you had uh, 20 h1 tags in your web page okay so you have 20 h1 tags in your web page and 
yeah, yes, oh yeah, sorry, you have 20 H1 tags in your web page, and you only want two of them to have a certain color. Well, you can use an inline, you can use, you want all of them to have the same, you know, font size, font weight, font, um, all of them to be underlined, uh, all of them to have, you know, you want all of them to have that, but you want one of them to be a little bit smaller. Well, then you can apply a, an inline style. Now, there are better ways of doing this, but that's just an example of how you can do it. So that's what an inline style is. Now, see this thing here, this H1 tag here, or this H1. This is what's called a selector in CSS. And a selector is a rule on how to define rule or how rules are being applied to a page. So this here is saying apply these rules to the H1 tag. So if we create a second H1 tag in our web page, we'll get rid of that inline style for now. Okay, so let's apply a second H1 tag. Okay. And we'll say subheading one. Okay. And because there's two H1 tags, if we refresh, both of them have the same style rules applied to them. Remember this color here? So now both tags are getting the same style sheet applied to them, therefore both tags have the same thing. Suppose we want to make the subheading a little bit smaller. Well, we could use an inline style. We'll say font size. Uh, it's 40 px, so we'll just say 32 px. Save. So now, as you can see, the subheading is smaller because in this situation, this rule, these rules are being applied to the H1 tag, and then this rule is being applied to it, but only this H1 tag has this uh, inline style, which is able to override all the other ones. So that's how that works. Now, there are other ways of applying CSS rules, not just to individual tags. You can actually say, you know, any H1 tags inside of P tags should have this, or well, I'll go through another selector. Call. I'll go through actually two more now. We can have IDs and we can have classes. So we'll just say, um, we'll give this an identifier. So this tag, we're going to identify this tag uniquely in our document. So ID equals main heading. Okay. So now what we can do is we can actually apply styles to the main the any tag or to the tag with the ID heading or the ID of main heading. So in order to do that, in order to define a rule, what we do is we say hash symbol main wording main heading. That is how you apply a rule or a CSS rule to a tag or to a uh, tag, yeah, tag with an ID. Now, warning, very important. You can only have one identifier on the page. You cannot do this. You cannot have two tags with the same ID, even if they're the same tag. You cannot do that. That is invalid. It'll still render correctly, but it's considered invalid. So what we'll do is for the main heading, we'll make the uh, we'll get rid of this font size tag, and we'll make the font size 50px. The reason I'm doing font changes and not other changes is because they're easier to see. So as you can see, it's nice and big now, and this rule is only getting applied to the tag with the ID of heading. So that's how you can identify a single tag uniquely in a document and apply unique rules to it. This ID is also very handy for JavaScript if you want to modify a, modify a certain thing. So the next type of CSS selector we're going to do is called a class. So we can actually change this ID to class. Class main heading. 
Now, how do we tell CS what rules to apply to a class? You say dot main heading. Dot means class. Now, what this will do is you can apply classes like this, so it hasn't changed. However, this is perfectly valid to say class main heading. Oh, of course, this rule is getting applied. However, it's getting overridden down here by this one. We can actually see this because if we go in here, look, see the way it says, look, the CSS rule for main heading font size 50 is getting applied, but it's getting overridden by this style here. So we'll delete this for now. Boosh, becomes huge. So we've applied the same rule to both things because you can classes can be used multiple times and it's very useful to split up classes uh, rules into groups of classes now another cool thing you can do with a class is you can apply two classes to the same element using a space between them so if we create so as I create I created one code so I just have a blue text So now if we say blue text and we apply it here and we'll get rid of that inline text. We'll get rid of that there, there's no need to have that there. And we refresh our page. Our text is now blue. But you're looking at this and going, but this is overriding. If you look at it, look, the cascading nature of style sheets, these classes are overriding the tag style because don't forget it's up here oh it's the same text but you just you can remove that but we're applying the same rule to it here blue text so if I delete this rule and refresh only the top one gets the style applied because it says h1 blue text so this uh, tag here is getting both the main heading tag and the blue, or the, sorry, the main heading class and the blue text class applied to the same set. So the same set of rules are being applied. And the order in which the rules override each other is in the order of which way the classes are defined. So if main heading was telling it to be red, the blue text would override that. So as you can see, you really can play with these CSS selectors. Now they can get a lot more complex. We just had to teach you the basics of this. And then in the next video, we're actually going to get to start building this web page in HTML practically. So this is going to be what we want our finished product to look like in the future. And we're going to do that.